Good morning, everyone, and for those who are watching at home, wherever you are. Our opening hymn on this seventh Sunday of Easter is number 214, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. On this last Sunday of Easter, let us begin. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto you all arts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And join in singing the Gloria.
My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you and also with you. And let us pray together. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for reading of Scripture. The first lesson is from Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for him, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the 11 apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful, their delight, Their delight is, is the in the law, law of the Lord, Lord and they, and they meditate, meditate on his law day and, and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, Therefore, the, the wicked, wicked shall, shall not stand upright when judgment, judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. The epistle is from 1 John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son, those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
as you are able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those who you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. You have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, who is Redeemer, Sanctifier, and Creator. Amen. Please be seated. I just have to say, it is so nice now that with, if we're vaccinated, we can do more and more. And it's just wonderful to have that opportunity to hug one another and to greet one another and all those things we've missed so much. I also have to say thanks to the choir who continued to record during this time. We found a way to do it. It was wonderful hearing Steph's beautiful flute playing. Thank you, Steph. And for those who sang and we pre-recorded this so we could broadcast it. But there will be nothing like getting back together live for, to do our singing. So we look forward to that day soon as well. This time of year, we're seeing new life all around us. It's also a time that marks endings. For young people graduating high school or college, there's an ending as well as a beginning. For those who are making wedding plans, it's the time of the ending of being a single person and entering married life. Life is largely marked by moments that are simultaneously endings and new beginnings. These moments create dividing lines in our lives. These dividing lines aren't so much a way of marking time or remembering event. They are those threshold moments that call into question everything, our priorities and values, the way we live and relate to one another, the things that truly matter, where we want to invest our time and energy, how we want to be in the world, and what we want from life. Dividing lines are those moments when life gets really real. 
They hold before us questions about who we are, who we want to be, what we've done, and whether our life matters and do we make a difference. And this year, the dividing line between pre-vaccine and now could not be more pronounced. And I think that's what's happening with Jesus in today's gospel. Today's passage that I read is called the Jesus' High Priestly Prayer. It is the prayer of Jesus ending a very lengthy teaching in the Gospel of John during his final supper with his disciples that is called the Farewell Discourse. The teaching and the prayer are just before Jesus is arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. It is called the high priestly prayer because Jesus prepares to offer himself as a sacrifice for the sins of the world, and he intercedes for his disciples in the same way that the high priest would have interceded on behalf of the people of Israel. In this prayer, Jesus is preparing his disciples for their life in the world without him. He prays for them and assures them they will be protected. He will be leaving this world soon, and he wants them to know they will not be abandoned. Jesus gives them a message on how to move forward to survive. First, he stresses oneness. The only way to withstand the fierce elements of the world is to stay together. Jesus says our greatest threat is divisiveness or disunity. Without oneness, we will perish or become worldly. He's not saying that we must have the same opinion on things, but we are to remain united. As a priest friend of mine once told me, he said, Being a member of a family means you don't always get along, but you still show up for dinner together. Through this prayer, Jesus reminds his followers to remain in relationship with God and with one another. Relationships are key to survival. Just as those with addictions need a support group, People of faith need to stay connected. And that's why it's so critical now that we start coming back to our traditions and ways of doing things together coming out of this pandemic. And so I'm going to take this moment since we're broadcasting this morning to talk about the congregation who is finding it more and more convenient to have that cup of coffee and watch the video. We want you back in here with us in person. So come back, don't be afraid, please join us, because there's nothing better than being together in person and sharing those little conversations that you can't do if you're just watching at home. For those who continue to watch all over the country, we still will continue to broadcast, but we want the flock to come home. Secondly, Jesus tells his followers, we still have to live in the world. Therefore, we should take advantage of the resources the world creates and to use them to be a witness to the gospel. Using the tools of society doesn't mean we've sold out to society. It means taking advantage of all available resources to the faithful task of building up God's realm. This includes engaging in the issues of our day through advocating justice where injustices need to be corrected. It means engaging in the political process and joining others in the community to advance God's kingdom in your corner of the world. Finally, Jesus places the future of the faith community in God's care. Jesus prays God will be present in the life and mission of the faith community. Although we're called to live in the world, we are, not, we are not outside the protective care of God. Our lives may take us to distant corners of the earth, but we are never out of the reach of God. We may stumble and fall, make terrible mistakes, do terrible things to one another. We may suffer in body, mind, and spirit, but through it all, God's promise is he will be with us. 
The context for Jesus' prayer isn't a simple quid pro quo. Dear God, please help me with X, Y, or Z. This prayer is a bit rambling and circuitous. It's confusing at times. It's hard to understand. It moves back and forth and folds in on itself, and it's as much about Jesus as it is about his disciples. Haven't you had those kinds of conversations in your life? I know that I have. They are those conversations in which we're thinking out loud, we're wrestling with life, making statements, asking questions. The conversation goes in all kinds of directions and circles back on itself. Sometimes those inner conversations make no sense at all. We often contradict ourselves. It's anything but linear and straightforward. We're listening to ourselves as we talk and trying to get some kind of clarity and come to terms with whatever it is that's happening within us. Sometimes these conversations are with an old friend. Other times they are prayers to God. Jesus isn't any different from the way I've prayed many times and the way that I suspect many of you have prayed as well. And it sounds to me, throughout his prayer, there is grief runs through the prayer that Jesus offers us today. It sounds to me like Jesus is trying to get some clarity and work out what has his life meant. He knows his death is coming. What has he done and what comes next? It sounds to me like Jesus came up against the big dividing line in his life, And more often than not, dividing lines can be places of intimate prayer. As I've said, we all come to those dividing lines in our life. It might be a heart attack, the death of a loved one, a divorce, the loss of a job, a shattered dream, an aging body, a disappointment in a relationship. But it might also mean a graduation, a marriage, the birth of a child or a grandchild, a retirement long anticipated, or an unexpected opportunity we didn't know was before us. In some way, our lives are a series of dividing lines. Every one of us can look back and see the choices we've made and the dividing lines in our lives, the questions that we raised, the choices we made, the struggles we faced, and the ways in which those moments changed our life. Dividing lines frame the human condition and our struggle to be authentic, faithful, and whole. In that regard, Jesus is indifferent from us as we think he may be or we want him to be. Today we see a very human Jesus standing in solidarity with us and our humanity. Today we see the human Jesus working out things and making sense of his life. And who among us doesn't know what that's like? We all do. We struggle to work out our lives every day. So tell me, what are you working out and struggling with today? What is the dividing line running through your life right now? And what are you going to do with it? I can't tell you what to do with those dividing lines. I don't have your answers. But I'll tell you this, what strikes me in this gospel is what Jesus doesn't do. He doesn't isolate or close himself off. He doesn't get angry or build resentments. He doesn't resist or fight back. He doesn't run away or try to escape. He doesn't complain about or deny the reality of what is happening to him. Instead, Jesus faces his life head on. He's in touch with his humanity. He feels what he feels. He grieves. He weeps. He gathers with friends like we do. He prays like we are doing this very day. He lives with a faith that Easter is always on the other side of the dividing line. My brothers and sisters, this is how Jesus lived, and my prayer for us this day is that we may live fully into this belief that Easter is on the other side.
Amen. My brothers and sisters, each one of us is here this moment today because someone brought us to the faith of the church and the faith in Jesus Christ. And for me, most of us that happened when we were babies at our baptism. And so during the season of Easter, we reflect on those promises made for us at our baptism and we reaffirm our vows each Sunday of Easter and so I invite you to stand and join with me turning to page five of your program and renewing those promises made at the time of baptism. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you cherish the wonderful works of God and protect and restore the beauty and integrity of creation? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. And now let us be attentive to the prayers for the church and the world in this Easter season. The prayers of the people for the Easter season. Through resurrection from the dead, God has given us new birth. Let us offer prayers to God for the living hope of all the world. <laughs> 
Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. For the holy church is in every place and for the unity of all. Glory to you for the radiance of, of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. For this holy assembly and for all who gather for breaking bread. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Ian and Laura, our bishops, for Ron, our priest, for Donna, our deacon, for Marcia and Dan, our wardens, for all who minister in this place, and for all the holy people of God. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. For the world and its leaders, our nation and its people, for all those in danger and need, the sick and the suffering, praying especially for Patricia Angelou, Tom Foote, Noel, Darrell, Sherry Phelps, Scott Goodrich, Irene Jones, Celeste Moore, Nelson Moore, Judy Fowler. Are there others? Glory to you, beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. We pray for the dead. We remember especially Judy, Phil, Jane Donnelly, and all those who are mentioned in the Easter memorials list in the bulletin. The sanctuary candle is given to the glory of God in loving memory of George Litwin. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God in memory of Bobby Marston by her loving siblings. Glory to you, beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. For ourselves, our families, for those on our prayer list, and those who are celebrating birthdays this week. Among them, Joan Hamilton, Georgette Conrad, Mark Houle, for those celebrating anniversaries and for those we love. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Remembering the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Peter, our patron saint, and all the saints illuminated by the light of Christ, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. To you, risen Lord, and for what else shall we pray this day? I ask your prayers for all of those who are experiencing the violence that continues in the Middle East at this time. I also ask for prayers for the repose of the soul of Dwight Stone, a friend of mine, and particularly for his widow, Karen Stone and her family, and Karen is here today as we celebrated Dwight's life last night. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, who opens our minds and hearts through the risen Christ. Hear our prayers that we offer in the hope of glory, and breathe upon us with your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. 
We're still going to just a few more weeks, hopefully, just share the sign of peace this way. But I'll get you afterwards, so. So welcome, everyone. Please be seated. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, the first is, I, as I mentioned, my friend Karen Stone, who I've known for over 30 years, is here this day with her family and her daughter Pam and Liddy, who, huh? Libby, I always do that. Why do I, I say Lizzie, huh? Okay, Lydia. That's easier. Okay, Lydia. Okay. Anyway, um, so. Um, and also, Denise Clark, for those who remember, Denise is here with her family. Al has been buried in a memorial garden. She lives in New Jersey. And so it's just such a treat to have you up here back back with us. We miss you. We miss him terribly. Al lost both of his legs and was in a wheelchair, but I'll tell you, no one stood taller in this congregation than Al Clark. So he really touched our hearts, and I know he continues to touch your hearts as well. So we're delighted to see you here joining us also this morning. So I just want to thank all the folks who helped last night with the roast beef dinner. It was a new dinner for us, and um, we shared profits with um, um, a new London organization that supports people who have vision impairment or blindness. So we're delighted to share those resources with our friends down in New London. And it was a wonderful dinner from what I understand. And also there's tons of pieces of dessert over there in the parish hall. If anybody wants to take some home for lunch, make sure you do because there's quite a few desserts left. I think we overdid it. I don't know how that happened, but somehow they multiplied, I guess. But thank you for all of your work. It, it's a huge amount of work, and it happens very quickly. Within an hour, everything is gone. It's like a production line. We had a new guy here joining us to help make the beef. He says he's never seen anything like it and how this crew comes together, an army of people to pull this off every time. So we're blessed to have all of that going on. And again, I'm going to make an appeal to all of you who are our prisoners and online. It's time to come back. The vaccines have allowed us to do more, to be present with each other more, and to, um, you cannot replace the side conversations. We're also going to be starting coffee hour the first Sunday of June. And Alberta and Chris have put together a sign-up list at the back of the church. We're inviting people for the 8 and the 10 to also sign up and help our normal coffee hour crew to kind of help re-engage us in that aspect of our parish life because everyone in a parish knows you have three or four services every Sunday. Two happen to be in this building and the other two are the coffee hour because that's where you find out about and share your lives with one another. So we are really looking forward to getting back to coffee hour with that. Steve Platz's wife's funeral will be here on Saturday. It isn't a huge public funeral, but I think that some of his closer friends, particularly the 8 o'clock folks, probably will want to come. So I'm just sharing that with you at 11 o'clock on Saturday. Are there any other joys, concerns, announcements? Anything from the garden? Anything to share? Then I will share one thing from the garden. We did something we've never done before. We put an appeal out to those who are in the memorial garden, have loved ones, just with a simple request that it's, we don't have necessarily always the resources we need, so if, if people would consider making a gift and an offering, and people have been incredibly generous this year and have really helped us out. We've never asked for help before, but we're just blown away with the support and all we've gotten from, from those who have loved ones in the Memorial Garden. So thank you to all of you and those families. And Josh, you look like you have an announcement, no? Nope. That's our musician up there, Josh. So we'll be recording after the service one more choir piece for the end of the year, and hopefully we'll be able to sing again very, very soon. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn is 544, Jesus Shall Reign Where'er the Sun, number 544 in the blue hymnal.
Our prayer continues now with Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, after his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us that where he is, there we might also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify also also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Dwight and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. and sisters, these are the gifts of God given for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And for those who are visiting today, our ushers, again, to help us with our protocols, will start from the back and invite people to come forward for communion. And I will simply be distributing the bread this day.
join me in our post-communion prayer of thanksgiving that you will find on page 11 of your bulletin for that which we've received. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I invite you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing, for the Easter blessing one last time this year. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 215, See the Conqueror Mounts in Triumph. 215. <laughs> Now let us go forth from this place rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.